good morning students in the previous sessions on the chapter sets you have learnt about the definition of a set which is a well defined collection of objects and the notation how to denote a set and how to represent a set there are two ways of representing one is the set builder form the other is the roster form roster form is we write the actual elements of that one set builder form is we just mention the rule that has to be satisfied by all the elements of the set and we have worked out some problems in which we have converted one way of representation of the set to other one that is if it is expressed in the roster form we have written the set builder form so if it is in the set builder form we have written in the roster form so we had worked out problems and we have learnt about the definition in the earlier session in today's session i am going to teach you the types of sets types of sets now one by one we are that is how many set, types of sets we will be considering we will be discussing in this particular chapter now the first one is known as an empty set it is an empty set see the word itself the word empty itself tells that there is nothing in the set it's a very clear the word that we are using here it gives us the clear definition itself that is a set containing no element or if a set does not contain any element then it is called a an empty set or we call it as a null set or it is also known as a void set empty set or null set or a void set all the words are used here so a set which does not contain any element is called an empty set or a null set or a void set next is how to denote it see we use this one this notation it's a greek alphabet phi we read it as phi the spelling being p h i or you can write the empty brackets like this don't write zero there nothing means you don't write zero if you write zero that becomes an element here so you have to be careful here so a set which does not contain any element is called a null set or a void set or an empty set and how it is denoted is by the greek alphabet phi or empty brackets we write empty a pair of empty square brackets empty uh, flat brackets that gives you the uh, notation for an empty set now Uh, we can think how how a null set can exist certainly by putting a particular condition we can uh, we can say that no element belongs to that one now uh, let me take an example let the set a be defined like this let the set a contain all x such that such that x square minus 3 equal to 0 and x is rational x is a rational number suppose a set is defined like this if the set a contains all x such that x square minus 3 equal to 0 and x is a rational number now what is this one it is nothing but a quadratic equation let me solve the equation x square minus 3 equal to 0 implies x square equal to c 3 that is x is equal to plus or minus square root of 3 now plus root 3 or minus root 3. what type of a number it is it is an irrational number whereas i have written x is rational that means that these elements do not satisfy the condition that means these elements cannot belong to this one so in this case now according to the condition that has been specified i can write that a does not contain any element therefore i can write a is equal to 5 it does not contain any element so by defining a set in a particular way there may be some element there may not be some element so if the elements no element is present in that one then we can say it it is it becomes an an empty set similarly uh, let me take another example let uh, b the set b be defined like this b uh, containing all x such that x square equal to 9 and x is even suppose a set is given like this we are asked to find the elements of this set and uh, according to the condition x square equal to 9 you can clearly see that it is again a quadratic equation x would be equal to plus or minus root of 3 
but what is the second part of the condition? It should be an even number. Whereas what is 3? It is an odd number. Plus 3 or minus 3, it is an odd number. So in this case also that becomes a null set. This is how we just consider. Or generally, if you consider a first PUC class itself, suppose uh, usually the age group of uh, first year PUC students, it would be between 15 and 17. Let us assume. Suppose I tell you, consider the set of all students of first year PUC who are above the age of 25 years. No student belong to, belongs to, belong to that one, isn't it? Therefore, I can say it becomes a null set. So, depending upon the, the rule or the condition that has been specified in the, in the set, you know, we can say that the element may belong or may not belong. So, if no element is there in a set, we call it as an empty, empty set or a null set or a void set and this is the notation. Now, let us come to the second set. It is finite set. See, the word that we are using that directly gives you the definition. What do you mean by finite? A finite means we know the exact elements here. So, if a set contains uh, exact, a finite number of elements, now we call it as a finite set. For example, the alphabets of a language. We are sure Kannada it may be 50, Kannada it would be 52, English 50, 26 like that. Different languages have different number of alphabets. So depending upon the language that we are considering, we can say it is a finite set. That's an example. So if a set contains finite number of elements, finite means countable, we will be knowing the exact number of elements, then we call it as a finite set. I told you already the alphabets of a language or the students of a class. In a class, no, certain number of students would be there. Whatever may be the number, it may be a very huge number also. Still, we considered it as a finite set because we will be knowing the exact number of elements. And then population of a country. See, by taking the census, now we will be knowing how many people are residing in a particular country. And uh, or suppose you take an example here. The set A containing the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you just put two dashes, no, then we will not be knowing the exact number. You know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many elements are they? There are 6 elements. So, we know exactly there are 6 elements in the set A. Similarly, take another set B. It is 3, 6, 9. How many elements are they? There are only three elements here. So, these now they are called as the finite sets because it has exactly six elements, it has exactly three elements. So, in the case of a finite set, the number of elements present in a finite set is called as its cardinal number. We use the another word for that one. The number of elements in a finite set is called its cardinal number and we usually write it like this. Here, n of a n, we use a small letter n here, n of a that tells us how many elements are there, how many 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, I can write it as n of a is equal to 6. Similarly, you take the second set, 3, 6, 9. How many elements are there? There are only 3 elements. So, how do you write that one? n of b is equal to 3. So, depending upon how many elements are present, if you write n of that set, if you denote like this, you have to write the exact number of elements that are present in that one. So, this is called as the, in the cardinal number, cardinal number of the finite set. So, finite set, only we can think about the cardinal number only in the case of a finite set. So, in the case of an empty set, now the cardinal number would become nothing, zero. And, uh, in the case of finite set, now we will be knowing the exact number of elements here. The third one is, after finite, what can be the next one? It is infinite. It is an infinite set. What do you mean by infinite? If you do not know the exact number of elements, that is, if the set contains infinite number of elements, we call it as an infinite set. In the very first session, I had given you some standard sets. What are they? Set of the natural numbers and uh, set i or z. We use it to say, denote the set of the integers. Next, q, the set of rational numbers or the set of uh, real numbers. So, all of them, now you can see that all of them, they are called as infinite sets. That is, how do you write n here? It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 
we put the dashes like this. That means that we do not know the exact number of elements. All of them are called as infinite set because we cannot, suppose I give a number 1000. There is one more than that one. If you take that number, there is one more than that. Therefore, we cannot write the last element of this one or we will not be knowing how many elements are present exactly in the particular set. So all of them, the set of these number sets, I mean natural number, integer, rational number, real number, all of them, now we take them as infinite set because we do not know the exact number of elements or we say the set which contains infinite number of elements is called a is called an infinite set the next one is called as singleton it is called singleton singleton means a set containing only one element that is called a singleton that means it should have only one element what are maybe the element we are not considering i am not telling a particular element here so a set which contains only one element is called a singleton suppose uh, i denote a set like this let the set a contain all x such that x is a prime number x is a prime number and x is even x is even. I have given the definition of prime number in the earlier classes, even you are familiar. A prime number is the one which is greater than one which can be divided by one and itself is called a prime number. What is the first prime number? Two. Then three, five, seven, eleven, like that, isn't it? And you observe all the remaining prime numbers are odd numbers starting with the three. Two is the only one even prime number. So a set A contains all x such that it should be a prime number and it should be an even number. So how many elements are present? Only one element is present. So we can take this as a, a singleton. So singleton means it should contain only one element that is called a singleton. Depending upon the definition of the particular set or depending upon the rule that has been specified, we just consider it as a singleton. So a set containing only one element is called a singleton. The next one is equal sets. Equal sets. What do you mean by the equal sets? See, suppose there are two here, we consider two sets here. Say set A and B. Suppose there are two sets here, A and B. Now, if both of them contain the same elements, not the same number of elements, they should contain the same elements, we call them as equal sets. So, two sets, say A and B, are said to be equal if they contain the same elements. For example, for example, let A contain the elements 1, 3, 5. Let B contain the element 3, 1, 5. Look here, the elements are present here. Same elements are present. Of course, I have told you in the, in the representing a set, the order, uh, the order is not important. We do not write according to increasing or decreasing order because it is only a collection. In whatever position you want to write, you can write, but they have to be separated by comma. That is the only condition here. A contains the elements 1, 3 and 5. B contains the elements 3, 1 and 5. Now, that means I can say the sets A and B are equal to each other and the usual notation of equality we write. So, A is equal to B. So, we say if two sets having the same elements, no, they are said to be equal to each other. Suppose, suppose this set B has an element, one element extra, 3, 1, 5, 6. You see that there are 3 here, there are 4 here, but this is the, these sets are not equal. So what we do? We say A and B, they are not equal to each other or they are unequal. That is, they are containing different elements here. Therefore, we say the sets are equal or sets are unequal. So here, uh, we have discussed about five types of sets here. First one, uh, an empty set. So if a set does not contain any element, we call it as an empty set. So depending upon how the set is uh, defined, there may be element, may not be element. If the set does not contain any element according to the way it has been defined, then we call it as an empty set or a null set or a void set and we denote it by empty brackets or we use the Greek alphabet phi, the first one. 
Second one, if the set contains finite number of elements, then we call it as a finite set. That means we should know the exact number of elements present in the particular set. Then we call it as a finite set. Third one, infinite. Infinite means if the exact number of elements are not known to us, if there are infinite number of elements are present in the set, we call it as an infinite set. The next one, if a set contains only one element, we call it as a singleton. Finally, if two sets are there, say take set A and B, then the sets A and B are said to be equal to each other. We use the same notation A is equal to B if they contain the same elements. Suppose there is change of even one element now, we say they are unequal sets. So these are the five types of sets we will be considering. Now, uh, usually the definition on the set types of sets will not be asked. The problem on the types of sets would be expected. We will take up the problems in the next session. Thank you.